when a white McLaren turns up and is owned by an ex world champion. <laughs> Hello, mate. How you doing? How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for the visit. Always a pleasure and uh, nice to go and check the um, garage out as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's nice to finally get you down. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been chatting on track, track, but never. <laughs> Yeah, so I still get here. abused by that, so don't yeah. worry. <laughs> so you beat me that day. Hey, really. No, mate. If you'd been on your GSXR, I would have got my ass yeah. handed to me. But I was—I tell you what—for a big old girl, that bike handles. It was better than I thought. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was better than I thought. I thought it was going to be pretty like a painful day on track, and it was actually quite good fun. Two wheel drifting, watching you two wheel drift through McLean's is funny. Yeah, that is funny. It was good. It was good, and yeah, it, it worked well. Yeah. Obviously not as good yeah, as Yeah, pretty little thing as well. It's all right, yeah. When are you next out on yours racing? Uh, so it'll be... Soon, very soon, yeah. Spa, 24 okay. hours. So yeah, Excited? A couple of weeks. Yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be tough. Yeah. It's tough there. It's a difficult track. So uh, it's always nice, but, ni but, but yeah, hard and dangerous. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. And then Mizano this weekend? Mizano this weekend, Mugello the weekend after. Okay. Then it's Spa and then it's Ascent MotoGP. So yeah, riding or behind, behind the, the, the mic, so yeah, yeah, depending on the, on the mic. Right. And what do you think to Scotty going to BMW? Uh, sorry, Top Rack going Top to BMW. Rack, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I think uh, I think it's a, it's a, a bit a, a, a big challenge, and I think they're doing a big push though to to make it happen. So um, um, I'm looking forward to see that actually. Yeah. So I think it's really exciting for the series. Yeah, I th I think so. I think he's probably a little bit hurt that Yamaha didn't give him what they supposedly promised him with motor gp uh, i don't know i think what happened is he got on the motor gp and he realized that it's going not going to be easy right and okay that, yeah, that was going to be a very tough that's challenge. an interesting angle i hadn't yeah, thought of it like that yeah yeah it, i think it was a um you know going going to the try the gp bike yeah yeah and it just requires such a different riding style yeah okay. and i think he realized there that he would have to you know adapt and change a lot which yeah. maybe he could have done yeah, yeah. but uh, it's a it's a tough, tough yeah. challenge to go yeah. to go that way is very difficult the other way around is easier yeah well bautista's the argument yeah. for that isn't he and there's not many people like top rack in gp is there they're all mice are our size really aren't they they're not six yeah. footers yeah, he's quite tall. I mean, he's very he's light because yeah. he's, he's skinny and, and lean. But yeah, quite tall. I don't know. Um, Augusto Fernandez is quite he's quite big. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's just a, it's the riding style. It's not easy. You have to adapt. And his riding style is very very good and efficient on a superbike. Superbike, yeah. But for MotoGP, I, I think he would have had to change a lot of yeah. you know automatic stuff. So. No. It's cool. So yeah, exciting that for this year. Be interesting, be interesting. But right, I won't keep you any longer because I know you've got to go Mizano. So thank you very much, mate. I'll Jeez, get your car nice in. See you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we give it some love. I'm going to run it on a dyno, I think. She needs a bit of love. Yeah, she's yeah. Not, she's not allowed me for a bit. She's pretty though and white. They are pretty and white. I love it. I love it. I've had it, I've had it for quite a few you years. Say 2016? Now. 2016, yeah. It right. was like a. Um, it was a little bit like a, it was like a treat after winning the world title. Yeah, in, in okay. World Superbike. So yeah. every time I look at it, or drive it. It reminds you of it. It, it reminds me of yeah, it. So yeah. there's a bit of a, like, um, what do you say? It's not just a car to me. No, I know so it. Yeah, please yeah. look after it. Yeah, I will. Give us some love. No, it's <laughs> perfect. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Right, see you later. Right, we're on. An idiot's guide to servicing a McLaren. What can you say to that? You can't really. <laughs> yeah. Put car on ramp, empty fluids, put new fluids in, send it. Uh, so this is a 570S. It does belong to Mr. Sylvain Gintoli, who is ex World Superbike World Champion, ex Mer GP rider, ex Mer GP test rider, ex BSB rider, and I beat him at Donington. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. He was on a Hayabusa and I was on a superbike and yeah. So we are going to, not because it's his car, but because of what it is, we're just going to do a service. I'm going to let Carl do it and we'll pull a flat floor off and show you probably something many people haven't seen. So it's on a ramp, it's run up. Uh, when you open the door, I'll show you. You have a button for rear flap. So you press that. And then this bit opens. So then you can get to your coolant 
and your oil, or your oil and your coolant. Don't get them muddled up. No, nope. that's a bad day. Uh, take your two T30s out, like them so. Right. And let me get a body stand first. So three poppers along the bottom, you've got your two thirties out, three pop poppers along the bottom, and then some poppers along the front. And you can literally do that. It's that easy. All right. Job jobbed. Yep. So there you go. If you look this, if you look at the front end, Dav, you can see these. So you hook them in the front and then you can sit the rest of it down. So it is it is easy to get off. Yeah. Alright, and then those three back one, those three back little pins. Locate. Sit in these little poppers. Alright, so you've got rear section, gearbox underneath, cross brace, that's the latch. Be gentle with this because it's plastic and it breaks. Then your two tanks, two charge coolers, two air filter boxes, which we'll have to have out in a bit. Um, and then intake pipes, and then right at the back here is if you go around that side, mate, and come here, because we'll have to undo it in a minute. You see that? Yep. These are all for the housing. All right. So we're going to undo that first. All right. So we always take your cap out and leave it like that. So if any of us walk past the car, we know there's either no fluids in it or there's something going on with the lubrication system. Because if you didn't, and I've undone that filter, and one of the boys comes in and goes, oh, I need a ramp quick, fires the car up, you never know. Yeah. So just little bits and pieces like that to tell each other what's going on. Because there ain't no dipstick, lad. So, I'm sure it's a 32. It's a 36, not a 32. 32 is R8. Literally just come up. Undo the oil filter. Like so. And just leave it sat in there. Yeah. Engine bay check's done. Basically. So we'll go up in the air, we'll get the flat floor off, and then we'll start getting the fluids drained. But have a visual check over. So these here, look at the charge cooler bleed screws. So we always vacuum fill a system, but if you don't, or you lose coolant and you've got to fill it back up, if there's just certain places you've got to bleed the air out of. So just Make sure everything is in good order. Everything looks good, nothing's loose. Can't see any fluid leaks from the top. So it looks pretty clean. Obviously the air boxes, we'll sort out because we've got two new air filters to go in it anyway. So let's put it up in the air. Right, so everything's with a gun, 10 mils. So we're gonna take the front end under tray off first. We've got to take the rear diffuser off as well because it's going on the dyno. So, literally, just start the spinning bolt there. They're the two you always do up first when you do the under trays back up. Get all the screws back in, but do the center one up first. So you don't stress it. And they're the worst bolts ever because the washers come off the bolt. So you can get fret in along the front edge. Here you get like a creaking noise. Yeah. So you've got a whip. Be careful where you bolt it up. It chafes on a flat floor and then you're driving along and you get a squeak. So like someone's been here before and not done something right. Because that's not in properly. That's toit, Dav. Because they're steel bolts on an aluminium panel, you get something that's called bimetallic corrosion. We suffer with this on the R8s a lot, especially on the spiders that have got a big 
uh, M12 bolts holding the panels on, which you just can't get them undone. So don't beat on them with a gun. Just put a ratchet on them. Rather than sit there and beat on them with a gun, you just snap them off. Yeah, really gently. Yeah. So we'll cop slip every bolt before it goes back in anyway. Yeah, yeah. Rust. Not a patch on the no ball though, sir. No. Man, this is this is workable rust. <laughs> right. If I get you to stand back a bit, mate, because I'm gonna take this bottom shield off. Yeah. tape on it to stop it fretting. Yeah. So this peels off or wears away and then you start getting noises. Nobody wants a squeaky macro. Nope. So we've got obviously oil tank drain, low sump drain, and then we normally take the two turbo drains out as well. Just pop them out. Um, that's the crank lock in there. So that's the one we normally... Should I get a light? Uh, well, we, we have, yeah. So that's the crank lock. That's where we normally put our locking tool in. So we're gonna take out bottom crankcase drain, two turbo drains, and an oil tank. But we're just gonna have a little look around, make sure no corrosion or leaks. So I think it's pretty cool. So you've obviously got water pump, oil pump, then the oil pump off a coupler, like what's on a Touareg. Yep. Yeah, this is the Volkswagen part. I've got a little bit of drives the alternator and then the same then this side that little coupler drives the front of the um, uh, air conditioning compressor yep so then that's bottom crankcase you've obviously got then vibration damper your stay bars so that's what holds the engine obviously turbo actuators are here turbo yep. main turbo drain hose oil tank hose, so that's a feed off the tank into the pump, and then the scavengers the other side. So yeah, pretty good mate. Just make sure you've got no leaks, no fluids, nothing dripping anywhere. That's then the bottom of the fuel tank. So that's what was pinched. So whoever put the under tray back on, yeah. hadn't got this sorted correctly and they'd pinched it up. Right, let's start dropping the diffuser and I'll get the lads to help me there because that's a little bit fiddly so crack a less screw do drain off there she goes here she blows the drain plug make sure you let that empty out and then when it's dumped the majority of it off we put a little little bucket and then we'll sort that one out that's again just a little drain washer, isn't it? I've spotted some stonage. I know. Do you think it's going to make a mess, mate? I think he's. Uh, could have been on track. Maybe. hanging all we're gonna do is we're just gonna buzz the bolts that hold the turbo drains on and we can then just leave it drain then while we are checking everything else yeah um, so what do you recommend or what's your sort of service schedule for these uh, so these are uh, well to be fair, it's the same as like the R8s. Yeah. You never see it based on mileage. 
So it should be every year. You need yeah. to service it every year. Just ch even if it's just change your oil and filter. But yeah, I mean, especially the harder it, the harder it's worked. So we'll put 300 V in this. Yeah. Uh, and with 300 V, really, no more than 3,000 miles. Right. And then you've got then you've got to be changing it. So hopefully this will come out nice and easy. That's how much, like, for people who don't pull the turbo drains off, that's how much oil, old oil would still be sat in your engine. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to do it. So much sits in the bottom of the crank, in the bottom of the pan on these. It's a bit mucky. It is me. We'll put this other side off. If it's being a little bit fiddly, use. Don't use a screwdriver. That's like a door trim tool. Yeah? yeah? So just open it up at the bottom. Don't force it in. You just want something to pull it against. Yeah, so you can get it in really and then pinch it against. And then start wiggling it out. See it walking up? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, don't use a screwdriver. Because all you do is you put a big gouge in it. There you go. Shouldn't have too much in anyway because you've drained the other side, but yeah. Do your job right. And let based on a medium heat for 40 to 45 minutes. <laughs> so don't just leave it now. Yep. Like, yeah. Get on with everything else. Sit buckets underneath it. First thing you do, get the old drain out of it and just leave it. And then you want as much of that dripping out as you can. So Let's start to take some bolts out of diffuser. We can get the diffuser off then. So again, these are horrible when they start to get rusted because they're little four mil Allen keys. And round off easily so if you give it a little flip your trigger and it doesn't move then yeah. we'll put either an impact driver or a, or a um, or ratchet on it you kind of get a feel for your tools like you know yeah oh, stones yeah stones Better find out what gravel trap you took them from so we can return them. <laughs> oh, that is not nice, Dabla. There's always one, eh? Yeah, there is. And in this case, it's that one. So we've got a pointy whacker. There you go, mate. So that was. <laughs> this is what a chisel does. Yeah. yeah. Hang on, hold it there. Yeah. Just a couple of love, hat, love taps of a chisel, mate. And you're all good, matey. Right. So, you got one there. <laughs> yeah, that one's out. 
No! Uh. I'm scared now because I can't get a chisel on these, Dad. These two don't want to be my friend. So we make McLaren's lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stones and debris and leaves. Oh, man. Wow. There we go. Yep. Sorry, bud. We have full access. We do. You have leaves um, in your hair also, mate. Do I? Yeah. Thanks. Leafy. That's leafy. Leafy. Right. Those are the two bolts. I had to drill out, look, Davla. The joys we don't show up on uh, video, mate. You know what I'm saying? This is the uh, the side people don't see. Yeah, director's cut. We save that for. <laughs> Did you even sweep up the? Uh... Yeah, so the stones don't scratch my floor. More. <laughs> Finished? <laughs> you do the service, I'll just wait here. Alright. <laughs> you all done? Right. Let's get these two screws out first. Let's fix one problem. And then we'll have a wander around and show you what we found. Okay. Go on then. Oh look. Davla. Hey. It's loose. It's loosey goosey. Uh, need to support that one. So that's not coming as easy, lad. Come on, don't do that to me, sweetheart. Here we go. He's out. Right, that's one. I think the correct term is recalcitrant. It's a fancy word for a Tuesday. Dubbin bastard, in other words. Oh, I was always called that as a child. Is that what it means? <laughs> the ethic. There's a little yes. flappy old thing. That's turning. So yeah, if you hold the plate down with an adjustable spanner, you can, you can bend it. Yeah. And that is turning the bloody rib nut. Mid, I tell you what. Spin the rib now. Right. So, this is just a metal plate with a thread set. And what happens? One of two things. People put the screws in and they never lubricate them, or they put them in with a gun, or both. So, what's happened with this one is they've put it in, right? It's seized because there's no lubricant on it, yeah. and then it's on a metal plate. But then, if you watch the rib nut that's in the plate, you see the rib nut spinning. Yeah. So now the bolt's not undoing, the rivnet is spinning. So I've got to get on the back of that now and try and support the rivnet and get the thread out and then put a rivnet tool in there and try and pull the rivnet out. All because people don't use copper slip. So that is the problem. That's the bottom bracket that holds the diffuser on. The bolt is seized in the rivnet. So we've had to drill the head off, but now when I try and turn the bolt it spins a riv nut so we need to get the bolt out and then sort the riv nut so either drill it all out and replace it or try and save that and then squeeze the riv nut back out so if you work on your own car lube up <laughs> right should we have a 
wander around, mate, and yes. see what we have food. Let's have a look. I say we, yes, me and Carl. So, apart from the seized under tray bolts, which we all saw, there's nothing too obvious except stone everywhere. Um, there's obviously no leaks out the back of the gearbox. These three areas can leak because the shafts wobble or the shafts can vibrate. Uh, damper is looking good order. We've already side to side everything and moved everything around. They all look good. Rear air ducts are fine. Plenty of meat left on the pads. Discs look good. No crazing or cracking. So in each corner, really, everything looks all right. Um, someone's been here before and pulled the damaged the arch liners look and pulled the threads yep. or pulled the holes. That's all right, if we come down this side then, obviously, apart from the leaks we've induced, yep. everything looks good. Um, his red security tab is loose. We'll just re-secure that. But the inside the car looks pretty good. Nothing obvious. Rear tires are knackered, needs a pair of tires. And then if we look at the DOT, so they're week 47 of year 20. So they're two and a half years old. So on a supercar anyway, anything over two years old, we'd be sort of saying, you need to think about replacing, even if they were had good tread because the performance is gone. So if we come around here as well and dab. Um, same again, where's the DOT number? So you're always looking for the DOT, it's in a circle. There it is. So 25 or 20, so they are three years old. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't look too bad to be fair, the front, they're just getting old. Plenty of life on the pads. Um, this look good, no cracking or crazing, anything silly like that. No play in the suspension, no leaks, dampers look good. Um, you know, all the nose lift actuators and everything look fine. Everything's a little bit crusty, but it obviously lives outside. Yeah. Um, so there's a bit there's a bit of corrosion here and there, a couple of stones caught in a few under trays, but all the flat floor looks good, look, no damage. Do you want a fag end, mate? A couple of scrapes on the floor, but nothing major. Again, little bits like this is not uncommon to see, especially car goes on track and people run curbs. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Again, same this side. Mechanically, everything looks good. Just if you stick your, you see like the brake. You see like the bracket and the brake lines up there, mate. Yeah. You start to get this. So all we'll do is we'll just hose a load of WD-40 over that just to try and kill it in its tracks a little bit. But you won't stop it now it's started. Yeah. Pad's probably 50% worn, so we'll see what it's to do there. But what we have noticed is if you come uh, round here, look down. Try to tread on this, I think. He's obviously hooked a, uh, hooked a front brake guide. Ow, sharp. Hooked a front brake guide on a curb and snapped it clean off, look. Right. Yeah, so we'll, um, we'll have to get some of them. The other one's gone as well. So that one's gone completely up. Missing? Yes. Front curbs. Or, uh, sorry, curbs on racetracks, that is. Right. Other than that, pretty clean. Pretty clean. So, pop that pipe back in. So, we put some drain washers on it. Um, and we put the uh, turbo drains back in. We drop it down. And we'll... Um, Carl's gone over the suspension and everything like that. So, mid, top, middle and bottom now we've done. So we'll drop it down, we'll pull the air filters out. We're gonna leave the diffuser off anyway because it's got, a, I'm gonna run it on a dyno. We'll put filters in it, put fluids in it, get it fired back up. Job done. Cool. So, oil filter, new oil filter. These are all genuine parts. New oil filter, sealing washer. Oh, sorry, um, O-ring. Uh, then we've got crankcase washer and the oil tank washer. We've got a pair of air filters new ones 300v and i need to go and dig out some o-rings out of my engine case engine stuff for turbo drains so we'll get them banged on get it dropped down and put some fluids in it so Drain plugs are on and torqued up. Um, 
the, they were like 25 newton meters. The filters in, new oil rings were in. It's full of like six and a bit liters of motor's finest. So we're gonna fire it up. You gotta run it all the way up to temperature and then you've got to do a rev hold procedure and a dash. So start it up, make sure it doesn't rattle. Too soon, not a funny joke. <laughs> This is easier to get in these. Make sure there's no leaks. So the drain plugs, the oil seals you've had off, make sure there's no leaks. Then we're gonna put the under tray on and then we'll let it continue to run up so we can check oil level and then we can set the oil level then. We won't put the diffuser on. I've got to fix that bracket and it's going on the dyno anyway. So we need to be able to get onto rear arm. Another thing not to forget is that's the keyhole or that's the emergency lock. Oh, yeah. Right. So just don't be shy with it. Because you'll regret it the day you don't do that. So it's noisy because it's running, but we're trying to get up to 10. So Carl and I have pulled the arch liners out. Another seized bolt that I've got to fix. But we're literally, this is the side of the airbox. to be fair. A little bit of grit and dirt in there, but yeah. all good. So, can you see this little menu in here, Dabla? Okay, so obviously we want to we want to check oil. So we go down to info, and then we go down to oil status. Yeah, hang on, see if that's focused, focus, focus just yet, hang on. Right. There we go, yeah. So it's gonna say conditions not met. Now that is either because the door is open, or, there we go. So now it's holding it at 2000 RPM. So I've got my foot flat on the brake, hard as I can, and I've got 100% throttle. Yeah. So my oil temps at 100 degrees, it's gonna count down then to zero, and it's gonna tell us where on this gauge our oil level is. So we want it between half and the next notch up, really. Yeah. In three, two, one, right, too low. So, we're gonna get Carl to put half a litre in, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna redo the test. Right, so at 96, we need to get that to 100.
loads on the stalk. I'm going to go down to info, in, down to oil status, pull it towards you, conditions not met. five of a litre I drive be the other side yeah so we're good we check 0.25 of it in road test it check it and we're all good so the other menus in here look is if you press back so obviously service interval we will reset this bloody hell service exceeded by how many days well it thinks it's 2028 that's why the clock's wrong <laughs> error messages none Time monitoring, take it for a road test, they'll pop back up. Uh, and battery status, 100%. Awesome. That's so good. So I'm going to reset the clock while I'm here. I tell you what, so him and his lovely wife, you can see why they got six kids. The man always comes smelling good. Hey, Lynx Africa. This, this is all day fresh. And his motel jacket. Yes. I don't know. Nice. So, that's how you service a McLaren. <laughs> that would have been easy if it wasn't for all the broken bolts. Did you put it in the 710 container? 710. Yeah. Have you seen that? Limited edition, mate. They only made. Um, 710 caps. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Hey. So, done. Sorted. Romeo, done. So, we'll, we'll run it on a dyno tomorrow. Uh, we've got to fix that bracket, put it back on. Yeah. Uh, we'll put the engine lid back on, run it on dyno, and then the rear diffuser can go back on. But that's it, pretty much. We've got to report back to him that the front brake ducts are gone, and I think he wants to put some tyres on it anyway. So. Okay, happy days. Sorted. All I've got to do is reset service, like, but we need a computer for that. So, yeah. Hopefully, something a little bit different. Yep. We had fun, didn't we, Carl? We, did. we love frosty bolts. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds us of the noble. Oh, oh you'll set him off again. Don't. <laughs> He's just cheered up from that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and get in my cabinet. <laughs>